Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to use behavioral trees and of course, what is the use of behavioral trees, why you should be using this instead of using the non-playable character blueprints itself to create behavior and so on. In order to be able to use behavioral trees, you first need to understand what is a behavioral tree. So, behavioral tree is basically the artificial intelligence for non-playable characters. Is the life of the non-playable characters basically, and of course with the exclusion of the character that your player is going to be using. And but it's also important to note that in the end, even if you make it quite dynamic, in the end it's going to only be responding to events that you have created. Um, but it's very easy to understand the key concepts, so let's go into it. But first, let's create a behavior tree. In order to create a behavior tree, I am going to our content drawer then right click and then in artificial intelligence I'm going to be selecting behavior tree. This is going to be our behavioral tree. Open this up. So this is the blueprint of a behavioral tree and it's also very very uh, similar to the blueprints or to the other, other blueprints on Unreal Engine. Uh, it's very important to note that is a, there is some quite uh, different uh, concepts in behavioral tree. So let's break into parts. First, in Behavioral Tree, you have Composite Nodes, that is the decision points of your tree. That can be, let's say, from our root here, I'm going to drag and get, let's say, a selector and a sequence over here. So this is the Composite Nodes of your Behavioral Tree. You can use this for Decision Maker. Uh, in this case, let's say, let's get this sequence over here. Uh, and as the name says, if I get, let's say, one and two sequences over here, uh, selectors over here, this is going to be played on this specific sequence because I have selected this decision making over here. So, uh, there is also the creator nodes, that is the conditions in your tree. For example, let's say if here in this sequence, or let's say in this selector over here, I can add a decorator and let's say if I add a cooldown over here, now I have added a condition for this selection, so this is going to take in consideration before getting this select over here. And of course the most important part is that I can get tasks from here. So let's say from this select over here I can get uh, open these tasks over here and let's say if I get this move to task. Just like that. So I have our composite nodes and I have our decorator nodes and I have our tasks. There is quite a lot more than that, but for now, just stick with these three. And of course, it takes a lot of practice to create really dynamic behavioral trees for your non-playable characters. But for now, I'm going to start with a very easy uh, example that is just an example where your NPC is going to have a, a render point and is going to be moving to that point. Uh, one thing that you could have noticed is that from this, if I get a task, I get a list of tasks but I can also create my specific tasks by just clicking over here into new task. And let's say this bit task is going to be, uh, let's just drag this here. So this bit task is going to be our uh, get random point. Save like that, place it over here. So as you can see, I have created a specific task that I can place in our behavior tree. So, I think I'm going to be deleting this. I'm going to get our BTT task that have just created, get random point. And from this random point, let's say if I get this move to, and I get our character to move into this point. Another key concept of behavioral trees is that you have a blackboard. Let's create a blackboard, a new blackboard over here. So, this is going to be our BP underscore, let's say, and place C, like that. Now I can select this B section with our blackboard and in this blackboard I can create keys for our behavioral tree. So first for this move to I need a key that's going to be the location where I want our NPC to move to. For that here in our blackboard I'm going to be create a new key that's going to be of the type vector for location. And let's just name it location. Like that. Now in our behavioral tree I'm going to get this move to, and I am going to be, instead of this blackboard key that is self-actor, I'm going to get this location. 
So that he's going to be moving into this key over here. And let's say intent, I could just from that add another task that's going to be a wait. That's going to be a delay of, let's say, three seconds. Just like that. So basically what I want this to do is that first it's going to get a random point, then move to, and then wait. Uh, there is also one key concept of behavioral trees that I think I have not explained it yet. That is, uh, behavioral trees is very dynamic, so we don't have to create specific conditions for which which one wants to be played first and then next and so on, because from uh, the location where you place each node in your behavioral tree matters a lot. So let's say I get this on the up and then it goes down. And then over here is going to be from our left to our right. So let's say if instead of getting this move to uh, as the second task, I want this to be the first one, then I just place it into our left. And then as you can see, the numbers changes to one, this two, and then still is one, three. And just like that, I can change the priority of our behavioral tree tasks. That's very easy to do. For now, just leave it as the center over here. For this demonstration, I'm going to be creating a NPC character, so just right click, let's go into blueprint class, I'm going to be selecting a character, because this is on an example, so this is going to be rp underscore npc. Open this up, I also need to create another thing, let's go into blueprint class, this is going to be, I want a controller, but not this player controller, instead here in our, our classes, I'm going to search for AI controller and I'm going to be selecting this one over here and then create this is going to be our BP NPC actually uh, our controller NPC open this up then here in our event grab I'm going to get behavior tree and then just make it to run our behavior tree that should be this one over here just placing it in here compile save it now in our BP NPC, I am going to class defaults and then I'm going to just search for controller. Then I'm going to get the controller that we have just created and I'm going to be placing it over here. In our mesh, I'm going to also be adding our, our, our random mesh so that I can see our character. So let's just add this one over here, drag this down a bit, rotate like that. Now compile, save it, let's go into our third person map, let's add this NPC into here. Ah uh, yeah, one thing, uh, I already have enough mesh in this map, and you need just to be able to move your NPCs around around. So if you don't have this, just let's just delete this one, so that you can see. So this nav mesh, I'm going to be deleting, here in place actors I'm going to search for nav mesh, place this. Put over here, let's just make it a lot bigger, like that. Now, see, now leave it like that. And now here in our get render point, I am going to get in our functions overwrite and I'm going to get receive execute AI. That should be the start one. And then from this first thing, I want to get our blackboard. And then from our blackboard, what I want to set is this location over here. So I'm going to be, and it is a vector. So I'm going to, from our blackboard, I'm going to set a value as vector like that. But first I need to get the random point for our NPC to move. For that, I'm going to, from our controller pawn, I'm going to get random, actually get the location and then get, Rondo location in navigable radius like that. The radius, let's say 500. And yeah, that should be it. Then I'm going to be setting this value as bool. The rondo point is going to be our rondo location over here. Then here in our set value as vector, I have our key name. I'm going to drag this and get a make letter name over here, then I back in our behavioral tree, the name was location, I'm going to just be copying this name, placing over here, it's very important that this is the exact same name, like that, 
and then just get a finish execute. Make it a success like that. And yeah, that should be working very well. Compile it, save it. So now we have created our task. And as you can see, I have our behavior tree over here. Let's just check one more time. Yeah, should work fine. Now let's test this on our game. Let's play this and let's see. As you can see, I have our non-playable character. He is going to get random points each every three seconds and going to be moving to. Of course, there's no animation. This is only an example of how behavior tree works. Uh, and I could, let's say, get this behavior tree over here. And I could watch his behavior while in simulation. So as you can see, it's going to wait. It's going to be waiting. And it's going to be moving, waiting, get the random points, move, and so on. So that's basically it for this video. I hope with this you are able to create your first behavior tree, your first dynamic behavior trees for your non-playable characters. And of course, stop using the blueprint of your NPCs to create the behavior itself. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll into this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMETY to enroll for free.